Hello, and thank you for joining us for this presentation on enabling wide area enforcement through technology. Also, a huge thank you to RSGB for inviting us to present to you today during the Festival of Road Safety 2021. I'm Emma Kelly, and I'm the Development PR and Advocacy Manager for Road Safety Support. Joining me is my colleague, Steve Callahan, Technical Manager and Head of the Calibration Laboratory. So today I will briefly recap the wide area enforcement strategy, outlining casualty reduction to date. I will talk a little bit about current thinking and how general deterrence can assist us before handing over to Steve, who will discuss utilising the assets to maximise the deterrent effect. He will also discuss conventional enforcement equipment, effectiveness and tactics, and how to engage and use public input, including dash camera footage, before we conclude. So, last year, I was kindly invited by RSGB to present on the Wild Area Enforcement Strategy. I won't go through the whole presentation now, but it's important to recap. So, historically in the UK, police forces and enforcement authorities and local authorities use the RAG system, known as Red, Amber, Green. The RAG Enforcement Strategy had been in existence for 29 years since the guidance was first published in 1992. It provided a means to identify collision sites. They were known for a high number of collisions and then they were prioritised and they were known as cluster sites. They were based on the severity of the casualties involved at different locations. So red was high number of collisions, amber was a severe number of collisions and green was low or no collision profiles. The collision sites were dealt with by installing fixed data cameras and then also introducing mobile camera sites at specific locations. This was a reactive approach, waiting for a number of people to be killed or seriously injured at a specific location before a safety camera was considered. There is no denying though that this strategy was successful at the time, but now what we've seen is collisions have moved away from the collision cluster sites. They are more disparate and they occur across a whole route or a whole area. So utilising the same strategy will not yield any further reductions. It will only keep a lid on the reductions that we've already achieved, but it's still a vital part of our toolbox. We therefore need to move to a more proactive approach. So myself and my colleague, Jan Shorup, and one of our directors and executive chairman, Med Hughes, came up with an enforcement model, which can help to create that step change. The model has eight levels ranging from traditional police enforcement through to community speed watch, average speed cameras, and looks at a new way to utilize mobile safety cameras. These forces and partnerships can utilize any layer and they can even add additional enforcement layers. Moving to a proactive strategy allows us to look at gaining compliance with the speed limits and road traffic laws. This in turn will help to reduce collisions and casualties whilst also reducing pollution levels, thereby increasing the feelings of safety and hopefully encouraging more walking and cycling and bringing greater benefits for our communities. This also needs to be backed up with robust communications and educational messages to members of the public. We know that behaviour change has a significant role to play, but behaviour change alone isn't enough. It takes a long time to engender change. Enforcement should not be considered as a last resort. It actually should be considered at the outset, alongside other options, for example, infrastructure changes or undertaking a road safety audit to look at how road user interactions. All options should be carefully thought about as part of a good speed management strategy. Enforcement can bring quick gains, but it also requires strong political stakeholder support. We need to increase the perceived perception of enforcement. People need to believe that they can be caught at any time, any place and anywhere. This will be achieved through unpredictable visibility. So the exact location and time of speed enforcement should not be known to drivers. We discussed the potential for covert or what we like to call it discrete camera enforcement. One of the things I recognised as I wrote the paper is that it's not a great leap to make since dash cameras and the acceptance of multimedia recordings as evidence are being used and submitted by members of the public on a daily basis, thereby again contributing to the deterrent effect. And enforcement technology in this area is rapidly evolving. 
we are not advocating an exponential increase in resources, although that would be nice. We are just trying to utilise existing resources more effectively, nor are we advocating a huge increase in tickets being issued. This is an evidence-based approach. It fits extremely well with the safe system and vision zero. Schemes have been piloted in Queensland, Australia and Cumbria in the UK. A 30% reduction in KSIs was realised over an 18 month period by using this type of wide area random strategy. So just to emphasise the two differences in the strategies. So image one, the map on the left of the screen, shows an example of enforcement sites under RAG. So it dealt specifically with collision cluster sites. And the safety cam cameras had a fantastic effect at reducing collisions at those specific sites. However, what we noticed was that collisions migrated and occurred on other parts of the route and across the area. It thereby became harder to reduce the number of KSIs if we employed the same strategy. Image two, the map on the right of the screen, shows an illustration of how enforcement changed using a wide area enforcement strategy. Enforcement was carried out anywhere within the boundaries of the route, thus giving maximum visibility of the enforcement vehicles on the road network, increasing general deterrence and ultimately reducing casualties. If you would like a copy of the enforcement strategy document, please feel free to email me. My details are at the end of the presentation and I'll hand over to Steve to continue. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Um, what we're looking at now, or what I'm going to look at, is, is making the best use of your assets. Um, and to make the best use of your assets, you, you really need to understand that the effect that they have on traffic. Um, I've done some uh, some studies on, on fixed camera use. Um, certainly in Cumbria, we, we studied this effect. And here, what I've produced is a, a little speed graph. Um, here we can see the red area is, is excess speed, the green area is speed below the speed limit or compliance speeds. Um, in the position where you place fixed uh, spot speed cameras, then drivers are, are encouraged to comply with the speed limit and as they pass the camera they will comply, but when they get beyond the reach of that camera then we've seen that uh, the, the behaviour of uh, drivers, specifically manipulative drivers who want to uh, um, essentially manipulate the enforcement system, they will return to uh, unacceptable or excessive behaviours between the camera sites. So we can see that illustrated here. Um, so understanding that is, uh, is going to be key to making the best use of these assets. But you must understand that the effects of uh, these fixed cameras are, are, are very much uh, localised. Exactly the same effect um, is seen for mobile cameras. So here we can see the position of a mobile camera and exactly the same influence on speed. Uh, the benefits of the, the mobile system, of course, is that you can move the mobile unit around uh, the, the road network um, and uh, decrease the manipulative uh, behaviours and capabilities of, of the uh, drivers because they're not absolutely sure exactly where those assets are going to be deployed at uh, the mobile cameras. However, um, in, the, in the last sort of uh, 20 years or so, uh, we've been, uh, the police uh, and safety camera partnerships have been deploying these assets at fixed camera sites uh, or fixed locations where uh, collision clusters have been um, encountered. Um, but what we're advocating now is, is to control the, uh, and to try and influence the disparate uh, locations that uh, collisions are occurring uh, by increasing the uncertainty of the manipulative driver. Here we've got a, a manipulative driver that's not certain. Here we've got, I've tried to illustrate um, mobile assets that are a little more discreet. They don't necessarily need to be marked, but of course they can be marked. You can use a mixture of discreet and uh, completely overt enforcement. But what we're advocating is in the proactive wider area system to uh, influence drivers throughout the network is that a more random approach is, is applied to where these assets are deployed. So the, the driver cannot predict 
um, and and return to excessive behaviours. So it, it has the effect of controlling the speed over a much wider area, uh, but essentially with exactly the same number of assets that you already got, because the compliance um, is promoted around the network. Um, a, a, an actual uh, an asset that was used uh, or still is used uh, to great effect is the average speed meter. Effectively, this this is taking um, two two cameras, an entry and an exit camera, and the the, the driver uh, here in between the entry and the exit camera uh, has hasn't got the uh, capability or um, the ability to use excess speed in between the two cameras because it's very difficult to calculate your average speed over a, over a long distance uh, if you use excess and compliance speed in that zone. So the driver is encouraged to comply over a much wider area. Um, here we've got, uh, I've showed a, a picture, um, essentially it's, it's wheels. We've got 110 miles between Swansea and Landudno here, but um, essentially what we're trying to do is to influence the whole of that area with just a very small number of assets. Um, with a very small number of assets that go to fixed locations or pre-planned locations that are, are located at uh, collision cluster sites, then um, the um, influence on traffic is, is sporadic and, and very much localised, as I've mentioned before. And the danger continues uh, because drivers will use excess speed in between the, the, the well-publicised uh, sites. So the danger effectively continues in between the locations. So if you um, deploy in this sort of uh, way where you've got fixed positions um, and those positions are, are visited intermittently by the camera, but they become well known and effectively they can be uh, published on uh, GPS navigation systems and warning, other types of warning system. Um, so drivers comply at the sites and then they don't comply in between. What we're uh, not advocating is, is something like this, where you put a, a camera on every corner um, or a police officer on every corner. Apparently even the anti-camera fraternity uh, in the UK um, are advocating the use of uh, police officers on every corner and they say they'll comply if you do that. Quite why you need a police officer on every corner to comply is uh, probably not logical really. But essentially we need to influence this much, much wider area, but it's absolutely uh, not practical or affordable to, to, to swamp the network like this. What we have to do is, is, um, is give the impression that that's exactly what we're doing, but with exactly the same number of assets. So um, I would say it's, it's important that all speed limits are observed everywhere at all times, and, and that needs to be published. So the, the, the uh, intent of the enforcement authority is that they, they will enforce any limit wherever they wish. Uh, there's no reason to have uh, a high uh, concentration of collisions and casualties at sites to enforce them. The speed limit exists and it's quite uh, acceptable to enforce the speed limit. We're not advocating not treating collision cluster sites. That is very effective and it works very well. But what we're saying is that that treatment limits the effectiveness to a, a local area only. So you need to publish that all speed limits will be enforced. But of course, you need to give the impression that the all speed limits are, are being enforced. Um, rather than doing it because it's 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 simply not practical uh, to to be in every area at all times. So what we're advocating is is a random uh, distribution of uh, cameras at much more uh, a much higher number of locations to deploy those assets. So it's much less and less predictable. So drivers will not. Uh, know where to where to comply and more specifically where not to comply. So the random deployment gives the impression that this effect is taking place, but 
but actually you're using this effect um, or this deployment, but in a very um, much more uh, clever way to distribute the cameras. Um, so the, the, the conventional, uh, the fixed speed, the fixed spot speed cameras do have that localized uh, effect, which I've mentioned before. And this was the graph that I'd shown before. So to, to increase the influence of fixed uh, cameras, which certainly have the place and they're very effective at treating collision cluster sites. But what you want to do is to affect this sort of area. So what you can actually do is, is combine the use of fixed assets and mobile assets, but deploy the mobile assets in the areas in between the fixed cameras. So you can deploy them just a few hundred meters away or a kilometer away from the fixed site. So if somebody tries to manipulate the speed limit uh, as they uh, have got out of the reach of the fixed camera, then they, they, they move into the jaws of the, the mobile enforcement system. Uh, and once that tactic is learned, so once that strategy uh, becomes uh, common and, 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 uh, and known among the manipulative drivers, then they will tend to uh, be able to, uh, capable of um, uh, being assured of that manipulation will not be detected. Um, it's far less and less predictable for them. So it's much more effective as far as uh, speed management and casualty reduction is concerned. Um, that's effectively looking at fixed cameras and the mobile cameras and making those assets much more effective at influencing drivers over the wider area. Uh, a similar thing can be done with um, average speed cameras. Um, in this illustration, um, we've got um, the city of York with a ring road around it, um, and we can deploy average speed cameras around that ring road and effectively influence the whole of the ring road with just a very small number of cameras. So as soon as the motorist gets onto that ring road system, they're, they're monitored as they go on, and they know that they're going to be monitored until they get off at the next junction. So speed is moderated through the whole of that ring road on those road links. Um, what we uh, believe can be done is you can actually, um, as well as um, having that average speed check, check area on specific roads, we believe you can actually convert this sort of system uh, to the roads that are within that ring road by declaring an average speed controlled zone. So if you if you deploy a few more assets just inside um, the junctions from that ring road. Um, so as you come from the ring road and you move into the city or into the road network within the city, if you place cameras around the edge and in the center, I've just got two there, but it could be a lot more. Um, in practice, it, it will be more cameras in the city. We believe you can influence the whole of the road network within that average speed control zone. So it's a, it's a much more clever um, and advanced use um, just by changing the strategy and the tactics of the fixed assets. So it's, it's not practical to enforce every road, but drivers that move into that area will not have uh, any uh, assured way of knowing exactly where they can uh, use excess speed um, in the in with assurance that they're not being monitored within that area. So a, a very small number of assets can have a much wider influence if uh, if the strategy is changed just very slightly um, from the normal uh, fixed road network strategy. Uh, over in France, uh, where they've uh, um, experienced a, a huge amount of um, vandalism to fixed cameras. Um, the government over in France have, uh, have reacted to that um, and they've deployed essentially what are covert uh, vehicles with a radar system in the, the Gatso Melia system, which is a, a radar that can sit behind the registration plate. So that's the radar. It can, it can sit behind the registration plate. This one's outside for illustration got a camera within the car here and that unmarked vehicle is set out among uh, onto the road network in amongst the normal traffic 
um, and it's it's uh, essentially very difficult to detect and perceive uh, by motorists. But the French government have promoted the fact that these cars are actually going to be on the road. Uh, here we can see 450 unmarked radar cars on the French roads by the end of 2021. So drivers on the French road network um, know that cars are going to be on that road network with radar speed meters that can monitor them anywhere at any time on that road network. So drivers cannot manipulate the speed limit um, with the assurance that they're not going to be detected by cameras that they know where they are. So it's an unpredictable deployment of cameras over the wider area network uh, has the potential for a great deal of influence. And this has been very successful in France at managing speeds and reducing casualties. Um, and a, a, another a, an advancement of that sort of idea is um, the almost ubiquitous use now of dash cameras within uh, cars uh, by the public. It's a similar principle as the effect of the Gatsomalia. Um, any vehicle on the road has the potential to monitor any other uh, traffic or driver behaviour on the road. So uh, in the UK, we've uh, deployed Operation Snap in, in, in quite a lot of police force areas where members of the public are essentially invited or given the opportunity to submit dash camera evidence of dangerous driving, um, mobile telephone use, no, no seat, seat belts, uh, careless driving, and uh, in instances of uh, very high speed as vehicles either approach or, or overtake uh, the cars that have got the dash cameras in. Um, the dash camera evidence is, is very powerful. It's got a video, anybody can view it. Uh, so if it's presented in court, the court can view the video evidence and it's very believable evidence. And the, the, the police do insist that anybody submitting the dash camera evidence should be uh, uh, to give um, a statement to support that. So this has a very uh, widespread effect. So just summarizing up the benefits of this is the speed management over a, a, a very wide area can be achieved with just a few assets, essentially the same assets that the police and, and camera partnerships are already deployed. Uh, you don't need to increase that number of assets to make them much more effective. You just need to change strategies and tactics and make those known to the public so it can influence them. Um, the drivers, essentially, the principle of it is the drivers cannot predict and manipulate the detection capabilities because they don't know where it's going to be. So it does, it does have an influence on drivers because they can't be assured that they can use excess speed without detection. Um, the public engagement uh, has the potential to increase support as well. Um, the, even the, the sort of anti-camera lobbies uh, around the country uh, are very supportive of police involvement. But um, we've seen uh, over the past uh, 15 to 20 years that public acceptance and public support of this is in the 78 to 80 percent. So uh, we have got public support and the dash camera um, increases public engagement and public support. So that becomes more visible uh, and the evidence can be collected of that support. Um, we don't, uh, there's less cost in monitoring the road. You don't need to spend a, a fortune in, in uh, collecting up data where high speed is used and where there are a lot of collision clusters. Um, the a wide area enforcement strategy just uh, enforces the speed uh, limit. It doesn't need to be done where collisions uh, are clustered. Um, and we believe that this has the potential uh, to affect the majority of drivers uh, and influence them in their behavior rather than just uh, at localized uh, centers. It influences them over the whole of the network. Um, so that uh, concludes our presentation. And if you do have any questions that you wish to ask after the presentation, then our uh, email addresses are there and available for you at any time. Thank you very much.